Hey, hello, fellow honor students. My name is Thea Keen. Today, I am going to be talking about affordable housing with my mom and city councilwoman and executive director of Habitat for Humanity in Missoula. Hi, everybody. My name is Heather Harp, and I'm happy to join you all today. So why don't we start with you telling me about the work that Habitat for Humanity does. So Habitat for Humanity has been around since the 1940s. And it started in the, the state of Georgia to really be a way that people of color would be able to actually have an option or have their chance at home ownership. So the work we do at Habitat really is designed to give people a leg up, knowing that people don't have necessarily a down payment to come to the table because we're working with people typically below 80% of the area median income. What they do get to do, however, is put in sweat equity. So we have a 30, 30, 0, 250 model, which means that they have a 30 year mortgage, just like any other American would, that represents 30% of their income. And they get that at a 0% loan. And they put have to put in 250 of their own sweat equity hours um, in order for them to move in. What led you to get involved with the affordable housing crisis? I got involved um, because once upon a time, I used to be a financial advisor. And for about two, a little over two decades, I was in the position and with the privilege of being able to walk through roughly 1,500 different personal budgets. And what I realized was that they were paying in excess of 30% of their income on their housing costs. And I would say, you should really try and find something a little less, less expensive. And they're like, well, it's just not possible. So here I was um, really in the weeds with people and realizing the troubles that they faced. Uh, and yet there really wasn't anything I could do to, to address it. So therefore I, I decided instead to run for city council and, and hopefully affect change at that governing level to create policies that could to create the opportunities for people for more home ownership and more uh, housing that would be affordable to them. I ran on a campaign of ACT UP, of affordable housing, climate change is real, transparency in government, and advocate for the unprotected amongst us. And to this day, uh, the lack of affordable housing in Missoula has only increased. And so I'm, I'm very happy to be part of um, leading the, the charge, if you will, when it comes down to creating some, uh, some innovative ideas and solutions to our, our crisis. So why should college students care about affordable housing? Mm. Uh, I believe college age kids should care about it because in order for them to be fiscally responsible, uh, you got to make wise decisions about housing. So trying to keep it at 30% is really key. And that's both for your, your rent or your mortgage and utilities. And that should not eat, eat up more than 30% of your budget. Trying to make sure that the housing that is just a basic human right, in my opinion, is affordable is really key so that you can do these other things that you want to be able to achieve in life. What makes housing affordable, or perhaps on the flip side, what makes it unaffordable? Mm, good, good question. All right, so there are like five reasons I would say contribute to um, a lack of affordable housing. Number one is the price of land. It just has gone up. Number two, uh, we have a labor sh shortage in the trades, and that has also had an adverse effect on the cost of housing. Number three is the cost of materials skyrocketing. Number four is um, time in the permitting process, which has gone on a lot longer than it really ought to. And number five is, is really trying to find a, a way to change people's mindsets around change. So why do we call this a crisis? What is at stake? Well, I believe that there are uh, there is a rising number of people who are being more adversely affected by this housing crisis than there was two decades ago. But what we've really seen, at least here in Missoula over the last 10 years, is now instead a growing dis um, disparity between those who are earning wages 
that have been very modest and haven't really inflated very much compared to the the inflation of housing, which has been closer to 11, 12 percent a year um, compared to three for wages. And so there's no way an average person can actually save 10 percent of their paycheck for a future down payment and stay ahead of the inflation of housing. The median home price here in Missoula is now stands at $385,000. That's up 61% from five years ago. And if we do the simple math problem going forward, now that we're talking $620,000, that is absurd. And, and so that causes tremendous gentrification of where many, you know, regular hardworking Missoulians can't afford to live here anymore. And they're going to be pushed out. And, and when that happens, you lose the uniqueness of a community. What potential solutions do you foresee in making and sustaining affordable housing? So I think if we put it in this context, one, we have a, a growing demographic of, of people who are aging out of their homes that are four or five bedrooms. Their families have grown and moved on, and now they want to downsize. Two, we have a demographic of people who want to age into home ownership, like they're ready, they want to do this. And three, we have a, a demographic of young families who, uh, who could really benefit from having some backyards to play in. And what we're trying to do is figure out a way for those back halves of properties that are oftentimes kind of underutilized or maybe it's a it's a weed patch or there's just maybe an old shed sitting on it well what we forget is that that land is really expensive and we pay taxes on it and so we're trying to come up with a solution that can help people um, reduce their taxable outlay so we're trying to address that problem but also create more housing could you give us a specific example of what a policy like that would look like let me try and illustrate what we're talking about. So Thea, um, if you can imagine this rectangle of my Zoom window is my property, all right? Uh, in order to create more lots, I would take a look at my property, this rectangle, and here I have on the front half of my lot, my house, okay? If we can subdivide that and put this back half into a community land trust, this property back here now isn't taxed. So even though the land might be in a trust that doesn't pay taxes, the home that Habitat wants to build on the back half would be taxable, just like the front half. We're really good, really good at building affordable houses. As I, as I mentioned before, the median home price is roughly 385,000. This home back here, we can build for $150,000, which means someone who makes 15 bucks an hour can achieve home ownership. And the last time that prices were at that level was back in 2002. And, and what we have here now is a, a, a new, uh, a smaller footprint home in the backyard that um, uses less concrete, so it's more sustainable. Um, but it also allows us to tuck in more neighbors. This is, I think, a very reasonable and viable solution to making sure that we can live with one another. Okay, so my last question for you is how can young people contribute to this matter? The, the most exciting thing to do is to volunteer at a job site. Um, habitats across the state, across the world, um, we have these volunteer builds and you can easily get involved for just a day if you want, or if it's something that you really enjoy, you can become part of a, on, an ongoing weekly crew if you, if you so chose. Uh, secondly, Vote. Vote for your electeds who support working towards solutions on affordable housing. Um, everyone says that they're they're interested in, in trying to tackle it. Make sure you do your research and find those that actually are. Um, three, be present and show up at your local city council committees um, or your county commissioner meetings uh, let, and be vocal and not disrespectful and I think that's really key but be able to do it in a way that is um, demonstrates empathy for others so show up vote and participate is there any um, 
social media sites or websites that people can check out if they want to know more information? Sure. Well, in, in regards to Habitat, um, our local uh, website is uh, habitatmsla.org. In Bozeman, it's habitatbozeman.org. Or if you just want to look at the international version of our our, our our body, it's habitat.org. But really great ways that you can be able to learn more about what we do. Um, I know our affiliate is also on Facebook and we're also on Instagram. So you're, I'm sure all of you smart people out there know how to find us. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. It was such a pleasure. It, it, this was a lot of fun. And um, you and your colleagues at uh, MSU do your part because this is going to be with you for the rest of your lives and I want to make sure that this world has room for you and your families yet to come. <laughs>